house price expectations affect what happens in the mortgage market. Now in the United States, we had a big housing bubble. House prices went up, then they went down. In Spain, you had exactly the same thing. People have tried to figure out what, what the cause of this bubble was. We have a somewhat, uh, slightly new idea about how the mortgage market and the housing bubble interacted. Once a housing bubble gets started, lenders are more willing to lend to low quality borrowers because the expectation of future house price increases makes default less of a worry for the lenders. And so the lenders, knowing that default is less likely because future house prices will be high, are willing to extend mortgages to risky borrowers. So we turn things around and show that the bubble can cause uh, this type of risky lending. Other people have argued causation goes the other way. Transportation links are really important in, in uh, affecting the location of population. People want to live in places with good transportation connections. Um, for example, I have worked on the effect of airports on economic growth, a particular transportation in investment. And some of my research showed that airline traffic stimulates growth in a city, essentially cities with high airline traffic are well connected to other places and as a result those cities are, are attractive locations for businesses and existing businesses are spurred to expand through, um, through good airline service. There's now an, an emerging uh, body of research in this area where people are increasingly looking for a link between airports and airline traffic and the economic viability of cities. None, actually. So my research shows that, uh, that control of growth in urban areas is, is generally a bad thing, that it leads to high house prices and reduction in consumer welfare um, in most cases. Now, there's an exception in that there may be a few reasons why cities overexpand, why they take up too much space. Um, one of those reasons is traffic congestion. Another reason that's more easily understood is that the urban development process does not include or does not take account of the value of open space. That kind of argument suggests that perhaps control of growth is a good idea, but one of the main themes of my work is that excessive control of growth of cities is bad because it can raise house prices in a way that is not justified. One of the, the areas that I've worked on is the effect of housing durability on, on urban growth, on, on the nature of cities. So a stylized model of cities assumes that you can rebuild the city every day. In other words, that the, the housing is malleable, that you can tear it down and rebuild it instantaneously. But, but real world cities, of course, are not like that. Buildings last for decades and decades. And so what you have in many cities is a coexistence of brand new buildings and very old buildings. And this coexistence is helpful in understanding urban land use patterns. So the, the age difference between the buildings is crucial in explaining that land use pattern. If the, if the housing was perfectly malleable, the, cities would be, the, the buildings would be exactly the same. They'd be exactly the same height. So urban land use patterns are, are greatly influenced by the durability of, of structures and housing, with old structures persisting for a long time and looking much different from new structures. <laughs>